Uh, good afternoon, class. I hope you are staying safe at home. Uh, uh, we have almost exhausted our scheme of our table, uh, course outline before the coronavirus. And it was just remaining one topic, and that's the use of uh, uh, the use of uh, correlation in hypothesis testing. Correlation here, we're just talking about simple correlation coefficient. And today we are going to look at use of correlation and hypothesis testing using piercing product moment correlation method. Because the piercing product moment correlation method can also be used in uh, hypothesis testing. And to do that, we have optimized uh, steps to be used. The first one is to state an appropriate hypothesis. Of course, I've told you in the pressure statistics, that is usually the first step. Because everything that is done in the pressure statistics revolve around the hypothesis that is already stated. Like I told us, uh, hypothesis, the pressure statistics start with hypothesis and also end with hypothesis. Okay? The second one, you already know it is to choose a level of significance. And then the third step is to calculate the test statistics using the formula. This formula is for Pearson product moment correlation method. There are so many variants of it, but I've just decided to adopt this one. This is talking about correlation between x and y is equal to n summation x, y minus summation x multiplied by summation y all over square root of n summation s square minus s summation s square and then multiply by n summation y square minus summation y square. Now when you have applied when you have stated this formula there are some subset uh, steps to go through. Number one is to form five columns and then in column one arrange the scores for x and sum. In column two, arrange the scores for y and sum. In column three, square the scores for x. In column, in column four, square the scores for y. And then in column five, multiply uh, x scores by y scores. And when you have done that, and you have uh, uh, determine the correlation coefficient. You now apply the transformation formula, which is T. This is T transformation formula. T is equal to R into square root of n minus 2 all over square root of 1 minus R squared. And then step 4 is to determine the degree of freedom. And for piercing product moment correlation method, the degree of freedom is n minus 2. And step 5 is to determine the critical T value. This you can do using your uh, uh, textbook. And then step six, draw the correlation table. Seven, make comparison. And then eight, draw conclusion. These are the steps. Now, we are giving an example here. That's an example. The following are scores of students in physics and mathematics. For physics, you have 12, 9, 5. 10, 14, 11, 15, 8, 16, 12, 13, 15, 18, and 19. And for mathematics, you have 13, 8, 17, 11, 13, 13 again, 16, 9, 17, 11, 15, 16, 18, and the 11. And we start with the first step, which says that require us to state an appropriate uh, hypothesis. And here we have stated the hypothesis both in null form and alternate form. In null form, which is the H rule, there is no significant relationship between students' performance in physics and uh, mathematics. And then the alternate hypothesis, there is significant uh, relationship between students' performance in physics and uh, mathematics. Now, these uh, students, about 14 of them, that were tested, 
both in physics and mathematics. And therefore, physics score, scores, we have listed them. The physics is the X. And the mathematics is Y. We have also listed the scores and summed them. For physics, it's 177 summation. And then for mathematics, it's 188. And then in the fourth column, in the fourth column, in this column, we have squared all the S score. That's all the physics score. You square them. For instance, 12 times 12 will give you 144. 144. And 9 times 9 will give you 81. 15 times 15 will give you 2 to 5. 10 times 10, 100, and so forth and so on. And then in this column, we multiply the Y, we square the Y scores. Remember, we square the Y scores here. For instance, 13 times 13 is 169. 8 times 8 is 64. 17 times 17 will give you 281. Now, in the last column, which is the XY, uh, you can say summation S Y. You can just put the summation sign for all of them. Okay? Summation S Y. You multiply the physics and the mathematics score. Not the squares. Please, only the raw scores. 12 times 13 will give you 156. 9 times 8 will give you 72. 15 times 17 will give you 25. And all that. Now, we have added all of them. This is 2355, 2654, 2492. These are the summations. Now that we have gotten it, we now apply the formula, the Pearson correlation, and Pearson product moment correlation uh, formula. So look at it here. N stands for a number of students. Summation S, Y is 2492. So you have 14 times 2492 minus. And 177, which is for summation x, and 188, which is for summation y, divided by square root of um, uh, uh, 14 times 2355, the summation uh, sum of uh, uh, x squared minus 177 squared into 14 times 2654, which is the sum, sum of uh, y score minus 1 minus 188 squared. Now, when you multiply 14 by 2492, you have 34888 minus 177 times 188, you have 33276. Into 14 times 2355, you have 232972. 177 squared is 31329. 14 times 2654, you have 37154 minus 188 squared is 35344. Now, when you subtract 34888 minus 3 from 3, when you subtract 33276 from 34888, you have 1612. And then, if you also sub subtract this, it is going to give you this. And then, when you find the square root, it will give you 1724.3816. And when you divide that, when you divide 1612 by 1724.3816, it will give you 0 0.93. This is the extent of relationship between them. But we are not, uh, this is just the first step, we are not much important, uh, attaching importance to this correlation uh, coefficient. Because we are trying to look at whether this correlation coefficient is significant or not. So, in the first case, we have determined this uh, correlation coefficient 0 0.93. Now, it does not end there. You now apply the transformation uh, T formula, which is T equals to R into n minus 2 all over square root of 1 minus R square. Which this R. Anywhere you see arrow, you put the correlation coefficient. And that's why this correlation coefficient is appearing here. And talk about number of scores. There are 14 students. And so our n here is 14 minus 2. 2 is in the formula into 1 minus 0 0.93 square, which is the uh, correlation.
calculation coefficient, and that will give you 0 0.93 times 3.4641016. That's if you find the square root of this, of 12, and multiply it by 0 0.93. Uh, your, that's what it's explaining here. And then this one, square this 0 0.93. Whatever you have subtracted from 1, and you have 0 0.1351. And then if you multiply this, you arrive at this, and this is the square root of this. And then it means that the t value, the calculated t value, will, be, will give you 8.765. 8 now, when you have determined this, the next thing you do is to determine the degree of freedom. Remember that the formula for degree of freedom is n minus 2, which is 14 minus 2, and that's 12. After that, you put this table here. This is called correlation table, showing the relationship between physics and mathematics. Now, from this table, physics, mass, this sum of physics, this sum of uh, mathematics, square of physics, square of mathematics, this is the product of mathematics and physics. This is the degree of freedom. This is the correlation coefficient. This is the calculated T value. This is the critical T value. You go to that book, the Innocent book, check 12. Check 12 in the T test table. 12 under 0 0.05. It will give you 2.179. And then, remember, since the calculated T value is greater than the critical T value, the, the hypothesis is rejected because it's significant. And so the summary there is that since the calculated T value is greater than the critical T value, the calculated T value is 8.765, while the critical value is 2.179. Since 8.765 is greater than the critical value, 2.179, the, the, the remark here is that it is significant. And therefore, the norm hypothesis is rejected. What we are accepting is the alternate hypothesis. And what is that alternate hypothesis? That there is a significant relationship between student performance in physics and mathematics. Thank you, and God bless. Remain safe. Next time, we are going to still talk about how to use a correlation in hypothesis testing. Then we will not be talking about Pearson product moment correlation. We'll be using Spearman R. Stay safe, observe all hygiene practices by medical personnel. God bless you.